Hi, I'm Lynn Beeson with the Georgia Appalachian Trail Club. I'd like to welcome you to episode two in our series of hiking the AT in Georgia. When I last left you, I was on the approach trail in episode one, in which we shared with you information about Amicola, and what you may find at the state park, and also what you may encounter in hiking the trail in the winter in Georgia. We covered such things as winter gear and winter equipment and what the weather's like. Now we're going to have one of our other club members, Connie Nestor, help you understand about planning and preparing for your hike in Georgia. So let's get started and let's go hiking. If, you're be, if you've been planning a through hike on the Appalachian Trail in Georgia, you've probably done a lot of research. You've been thinking about what you need to do for your gear and your equipment. And you've also just been paying a lot of attention to the trail. But the one area you probably haven't thought about a lot is your physical conditioning. And this is really important. A lot of people think that things in Georgia aren't that difficult. But as you can see with the descent coming down from Springer Mountain, things can get really tough here. It's hard to go up and down these mountains. Even a seasoned hiker no notices that when you go up a 3,500 foot mountain with a 30 pound pack on your back, things can get really tough. Mountains here in Georgia can be pretty tough. Going up may be difficult, but coming back down the other side is difficult as well. It can be hard on your knees and on your feet. And after you get down to the bottom of the mountain, guess what? You get to do it all over again. And every time you see the word gap on your map or in your guidebook, that just means that you're going to go down a hill and then you're going to turn around and go right back up another one. It can be really hard to hike in Georgia and things don't get any easier once you get into North Carolina and Tennessee. There's a saying among hikers, the best way to learn how to hike in the mountains is go hike in the mountains. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't be doing some sort of physical, physical conditioning before you get here. If you do, it'll make your life a lot easier at the end of the day, and you can enjoy your days more. Best way to do that is to practice with some shakedown hikes. Get your backpack, load it up, put in your tent, your stove, all the things you'll need for an overnight adventure. Don't just pick a sunny day. Pick very differing weather conditions. Go out in the rain. It could be fun. Load up your pack, go out, and you know, along the way, you'll learn how to use your stove, how to filter your water. All these things you can learn during a shakedown hike. When you're coming down a steep descent like this one here from Springer Mountain, you need to be really careful. Descents are tough. And if you fall here, you're not going to have a very good time for the next few days. Pay really close attention to where you're putting your feet and take it slow. Go slow on the uphills, go slow on the downhills. Have a good time and enjoy your hike. Earlier in our discussion, we were talking about maps. Well, here in Georgia, our trails are really well marked. As you can see here, this is the mark for the AT. We also have some really nice signs available, but sometimes you come to a road crossing or a trail crossing and you need to know which way to go. Make sure you're following the proper trail markings. As you can see up here, we have the marking for the Benton Mackay Trail. While the trail is really well marked here in Georgia, it's still very important to carry with you a, a small map and a compass. You don't have to have a big map. You can just use a small trail map and always have your compass with you. These are really good tools to have, but you have to know how to use them. An example of knowing how to use your compass and your map would be the difference between trail north and actual pointing north on your compass. These are important things that you need to learn. 
The other thing is, is that when you leave the trail and you follow a blue blaze, which you're going to do every day on the Appalachian Trail, you follow a blue blaze trail, which will take you to a privy or to a shelter or maybe to a water source. When you come back to the trail, you'll need to know which direction to go in. If you need to, you can always use your compass to know which direction to follow. Okay, now I'm going to put these things away and I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about trail safety. A lot of times when you head off of the trail and you go to a scenic overlook, it's a good thing to have items with you that you might need in case of an emergency. And I'm not talking about things that you have loaded down in the bottom of your pack that you can't get to. You need to have things readily available. For example, water, you need a headlamp, maybe some snack items, a whistle, and a small knife. These are all things that you can carry with you in your pocket. This doesn't add a lot of weight and you're going to need them anyway. The idea is to have them readily available when you're out there and you can pull them out and use them if you need to. You don't want to have to drop your pack, go searching for things that you're going to need. Just have them readily available in a handy pocket pouch and then that way you can use them if you get lost on the trail or you need to signal for somebody. Well, right up the trail here is Stover Creek Shelter. Also on from that, about five miles, is the Hawk Mountain Tent Pads and the Hawk Mountain Shelter. Both of those are great places to stop if you're a through hiker and you need a place to camp. Also, water is really plentiful on, the on this section of the trail. Well, I guess I better get going. I'll be heading trail north. Hi, this is Bill Bryant again, and just wanted to say thanks for watching episode two of our series on hiking the AT in Georgia. Thanks to Connie for telling us a little bit about the terrain in Georgia, how to walk carefully, and how to prepare for your hike. Be sure you're out there taking those steps. Uh, we'd also like to talk to you about joining the GATC and becoming a member of our club or joining our friends of the GATC in Georgia to uh, help us support and maintain the trail for the future. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in episode three. The Georgia Appalachian Trail Club manages, maintains, and protects the Appalachian National Scenic Trail in Georgia with volunteers from its membership and the interested public. Our club promotes the appreciation of the Appalachian Trail and natural outdoor places through education and recreational activities with an emphasis on conservation ethics and protection of the forests, their natural resources, and wilderness areas.